Hi, Ryan. That was a lot of fun on Saturday. We should do it more often, I think. <laughs> um, get into some of the young uh, guys that are stepping up this spring. Look, like C.J. Hicks was taking some reps at the first team. I know you guys are rotating a lot. Yeah. C.J. Hicks, um, Jordan Hancock, maybe some other guys, I mean, Joe Royer. I don't know, some, some young guys that maybe didn't play much last year or play at all that are stepping up this spring. Yeah, I, th I thought Saturday was great. You know, I want to thank all the students for coming out. That was that was a great atmosphere, and it was great to you know feel those guys and their support certainly year round. Um, when I had a chance to thank them after practice, but publicly want to thank them for all their support, the whole student body, because uh, it means a lot to our team. And there were a lot of guys out there that stayed for a long time, and I know that you know spent time maybe signing autographs, taking pictures. So I thought that was great, great day for all of us, uh, great day of recruiting. Um, so I, like you said, maybe need to do more of that. I like that. I like that idea. Um, there's been a lot of guys who have had great opportunity to step up. And I guess this is practice nine, so we still have uh, Wednesday, Friday this week. We come back and have another week before we head into the um, spring game. So this is kind of where you find out where guys are in terms of uh, are they going to start to separate themselves. And um, but like you said, I thought you know CJ's had a – and Gabe have both done a good job coming in. Chip has done a good job coming in. Those young um, linebackers and in, in the, in the outside have really – you know, J.K. and Jordan have both done a really good job of, of coming on. I think that's been good. Cam Martinez and, and Tanner are doing a good job inside. Um, the safeties have looked good. Um, you know, and, and some of the younger uh, defensive linemen have done a good job as well. So if you're trying to identify who some of the younger guys are, um, I mean, I think everybody's really, you know, grown now. You know, who can get into the two deep and get on the field? I think that's, you know, what we'll find out as we head towards the end of spring and then into preseason. Are we maybe talking too much about the jack position? Like, might you guys use more of the traditional – you know, four down front um, defensively. Uh, I think you'll you'll see with with Jim's defense, there's um, different personnel groupings and so different roles and um, how much some of those positions grow as time goes on is based on how well our guys can jump into it and what we think fits the personnel that we have. But um, that package, you know, with with that jack in there is is uh, it's a good package. Now, again, how much do we want to use that? That's yet to be determined, but. Um, you know, a good portion of that stuff's been installed now, and now we see what, what happens with it. Row, uh, third row, uh, middle, uh, Colin Gabe. Bye. Hey, Ryan. Um, hey. I've asked you before about steel chambers and, and having an entire offseason as a linebacker, and I'm curious, nine practices in, how or do you see him kind of taking control, kind of taking advantage of this opportunity to kind of lead the room? Because he is one of the most experienced linebackers in that room. He is, and, and now, um, you know, we'll play with three linebackers in the game, and and we'll also play with two linebackers in the game. And um, there's a lot of guys in there. So it's very, been, been very competitive. And uh, I thought what Steele did last year was, was uh, you know, significant, not being able to have a whole year under his belt of playing the position. Now he's got a whole spring with, with Jim coaching the linebackers. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's grown. He's, obviously, he was playing running back at this point last year. So uh, he's much further along than he was at this point last year. Uh, but that group has more experience than it's had. Uh, and we have some good young guys who are stepping in there as well. Guys were uh, weren't available at the spring pr or the practice Saturday. G Scott um, and Cam Bad. I'm just wondering what the status would be of the, uh, them moving forward if there's any updates. Yeah, no, I mean, um, you know, G was out there today, and you know, just on a daily basis, based on injuries or other things, you know, sometimes guys aren't available, but um, but you know, we expect those guys to be available moving forward. Donovan Jackson, we saw him out practice practicing a tackle on Saturday in addition to guard. You know, how much has he been cross training between those two positions? And is that more about building depth for now or about his possible future? Um, more about building depth for now. He's been mostly been a guard. Um, even last year, you know, he played some of that uh, tight end position and then had, had played some tackle during mostly practice. Um, last year, I don't know if he ever played any, any reps at, at tackle last season, but. Uh, he's very intelligent, very athletic, can process information at a pretty high level for his age. So, um, you know, we do that as, you know, sort of a depth, um, you know, kind of rain insurance moving forward. Um, as we start to get some guys back like Josh Fryer and, and some of the guys who are a little nicked up, uh, you know, we'll move back to guard. But uh, right now he's running with the ones at left guard. And uh, Alexis Cavazos was another guy. He wasn't out there on Saturday. What's his status right now? Yeah, same thing. Just, you know, there's certain guys that on a daily basis aren't available and, and then we just kind of, you know, go from there. Uh, second row left, Bill Landis, The Athletic. <coughs> Ryan, uh, you're, the, the sport, I guess, is in a place right now where a guy like Kyle McCord, you know, might look around because he's a talented guy who's kind of entrenched as a, as a number two right now behind another very talented quarterback. Um, did you have to have much conversation with him about that 
you know, leading into this offseason? And, and I guess how has he embraced sort of his position right now in the depth chart? I mean, I think he's had a good spring. Um, you guys were out there. You saw some of the balls that he threw. And having a whole year under his belt now, he's that much better. And uh, you know he's competitive. He wants to be at Ohio State. You know he's made that clear to us. And um, you know he's going to be ready. You know in that first game, if if you know, he needs to be in that game. I mean that's that's the thing is you know when you when you feel like you're the backup, you know sometimes you feel like you're miles away, but you're only one snap away. And I think he understands that, and he understands what it means to get developed. And I think that's what his focus has been on. What are some of the areas of emphasis, I guess, for him in terms of development this spring? Um, you know, second year in the offense and, and having just a better feel for it. Uh, you know, the anticipation of routes, throwing the ball on time, uh, pocket movement, um, and just, you know, overall decision making. Uh, front row right, Joey Costner, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, uh, I know that the, the Jack position's only been, I guess, recently installed, but from, from the times you've seen it, I guess, in practice, what, what do you think is advantageous about it? What kind of do you think it does for your defense? What's it been like to, to go against it? You can, uh, you know, you can just be multiple with the spacing up front, and that creates a little bit of indecision for the line. And you know, while you, you have the ability to line up <clears throat> with four down spacing, now you can change to more of a three down um, with that with that uh, position, um, and, and you can kind of change the angles of the blocking and the double teams. And uh, anytime you do that, now you know the offensive line's not as sure of, of themselves, uh, but we're keeping it consistent for the other guys on the field, which is great. From the periods we watched on Saturday, it seemed like the Defensive line, defensive front did a pretty good job of getting pressure. Just what were your kind of takeaways from from the de- front of the defense? And- yeah, I think um, the the depth that we've created at defensive line is going to be a huge advantage for us. I think our, our our twos and threes are further along on the defensive side of the ball than they are on offense right now. So you're seeing um, you know a lot of pressure on the quarterback, especially with the twos and threes. You know, we're hoping to get some of those guys back on offense, but. I think when you look at the depth and you know some of the guys at defensive end and at defensive tackle, you know we're two almost three deep at some of those positions right now, which is going to be huge going into the fall. Uh, uh, fourth row left, Jacob Bench, the Lancer. Hey Ryan, we've talked with Jim Knowles sometimes about uh, the safety position in this defense, and he, you know, he said that uh, he wants to be a safety-driven defense and whatnot. Uh, we got to see Ronnie Hickman and Tanner McAllister kind of work somewhat as the boundary and the field safety and whatnot. Have you noticed those two guys, because they are veteran, how have they kind of meshed together with Tanner coming into Ohio State? Well, it seems to be well. I, I think the guys respect Tanner. I think they like the way he approaches the game. He's, like I told you before, a little bit of a player coach because he knows the system and has been in the system. Um, but you, know, you have to have the right guy who walks in that room because you know it's a prideful group. And and uh, but I think his approach has been great. I think he just has a good mentality around those guys, and he's just gone gone about the business of working really hard to earn a position. And um, you know I think he and Cam both are, are grinding at that position, and um, you know pleased with what we see. And I think the communication of those three safeties is important. They all have to be on the same page because we're so multiple. And I think every practice that we get under our belt, we're getting more and more, you know, really fluent in that language. You got to watch your quarterbacks play at practice. And I think we all know about CJ, Kyle, Devin, but with Chad Ray being another guy on your, your roster, I wanted to ask you just about his background, your impressions of him, just how he's, uh, how he's joined the team and whatnot. You know, we, we kind of, it's, it's tough when you're, you're able to kind of come in here right at spring, at spring practice, the beginning, you know, didn't have the opportunity to go through mat drills or the off season. Um, and so, that's not easy to do, and, and sometimes that role is a role that can be a little thankless. Uh, but we certainly appreciate it. You know, everybody's role is the same, or isn't the same around here. But their importance is just as important as everybody else to keep the operation going. And so, um, you know, JP and and, um, and Jagger last year really did a great job with that, with the scout team, with you know whatever needed to be done. And so, um, you know, he's you know going to do the same. But he was a little bit behind because he joined us right at the beginning of spring practice. Devin, he's nine practices in now. We got to see him a little bit more on Saturday. He had some good moments, but also some moments that showed he was a freshman. Can you just talk about his you know, progression over the first nine practices? Yeah, I mean, pleased with the first nine practices. Um, like, you know, it can be a little tough so there sometimes with the threes, but he um, he's making it work. You know, he saw his athleticism and what he can do pulling the ball, and he's got a strong arm. So the more reps he gets, the, you know, the better he's going to be. And uh, we talked adamantly about wanting four. I know scholarship numbers are kind of tight right now, but is, is there any plan to add a fourth guy? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're, we'll always keep an eye on it because we want to have four. Um, doesn't always work that way. Um, you know, there's been times we had to add a guy like in August, you know, so we'll be on our toes and, and ready to adapt. But, you know, we feel good about these three going into the fall. Uh, front row right, option Ward, Ryan, after pro day, CJ stayed and 
talked to us for like 20 minutes and you didn't have to. Signed, took photos with every single person that was in line on Saturday. Have you noticed a change in him from last spring or last September with the sort of face of the program situation he's in now? Well, I don't see a change with, with him as a person, and I think that's what's been great. He's uh, pretty much kept it. Um, you know, he's been level-headed about it. I think we talk about after that, you know, second game and losing to Oregon and kind of where that was and the shoulder and to where he's at right now, it's pretty remarkable. And a lot of that is because he didn't ride the roller coaster and he's been strong, he's been steady. And and now it's the same thing. And now as, you know, things are going well coming off that Rose Bowl and being a Heisman Trophy finalist, he's kind of been level though. He hasn't really rode that roller coaster. And you can see his humility uh, and how much he appreciates all the support and all the support that you guys give and certainly the students. And it says a lot about who he is as a person. To go back to, to G and the tight ends, with Cade going over there and maybe Royer coming on and Mitchell be healthy, I, there was so much hype and expectation for G. And I don't know if it's connected the way he envisioned. What, what do you see as his role moving forward? Well, that, that whole room gives us um, some real athleticism this year. And the more uh, roles that they can take on, then the more they can do. So when you first look at a tight end, you say, oh, can he block a seven technique? OK, if you can, you check that box. Uh, can he run routes? You check that box. Can he line up on the perimeter and stock block? Can he come across and crunch? Can he insert in the counter game? You know, There's a lot of job descriptions for a tight end. Can he pass protect? And the more of those job descriptions you can check off, the more they can play and the more they can stay on the field, the uh, more we can do with them. So uh, that's you know he, when you make the transition over there, just like Cade did, uh, like Mitch did. Mitch really went from running back coming out to, to this position at tight end. Um, it was the same thing. You know, Joe was a tight end coming out, but he's more of a receiver. G was a receiver who got moved to tight end. And then Cade was more of a linebacker that got moved to tight end. So when you make those transitions, uh, it's a developmental position. It takes a little time to, to learn how to do those jobs. You have to change your body. You have to understand it because you're, you're involved in all three phases, the protection, the run game, and then also in, in the routes. So, um, you know, again, the more that they can do, then the more of a role they're going to have. Far right, Clay Hall with the SYX. How, yeah, how much confidence has your confidence been restored in the defense and can practice or a spring game confirm some of that or only September 3rd will you really know? Uh, I mean, you see, you see signs that uh, lead you down uh, you know, a belief in, in what you're seeing. Um, and every day you, you got a pretty good idea what's going on. I mean, you have to go put it on the field, like you're saying, but um, you know, so the spring game, well, well, guys will get out there and they'll play and they'll compete, and that'll be that'll be a lot of fun for a lot of people, and certainly looking for a great crowd there. I think that's going to be a great day for us. Uh, but uh, in terms of you know understanding you know where we're at, we still have you know a bunch of practices in August and the preseason to figure out where we're at. But uh, we're certainly off to a good start, and we got a good group over there. How much uh, Notre Dame are you doing now? Uh, some, but but not not a ton. Um, you know, now it's more about the fundamentals. Uh, we certainly know that they're out there, and we're, we're keeping an eye on it and watching the film here and there. But for the most part, it's it's the fundamentals, and it's about competing and getting the offense and defense installed. Do you have a format for the spring game? Is it not yet. Uh, we have to look at our depth, and we have to look at our you know who's healthy um, and those type of things, and, and you know make some decisions. But uh, we're not that far away, so we'll probably by the end of the week get a pretty good f feel for what it's going to be. Everybody's talking about Jim and how he's kind of implementing his defense and, and how the progress is there. But are you seeing the things from from Tim and Perry that you expected to see this spring as far as those particular units and how they're coaching them? Right yeah, now? absolutely. I think they've done a great job, both of them. Uh, Larry as well. I think um, just overall, there's the energy over there. You can see they just the guys are playing with confidence. They they enjoy the defense, and uh, you know, make a mistake, you make a mistake, but you're going to coach it up full speed, and uh, the guys enjoy playing for them. You're talking a lot about defensive confidence and, and just a little bit of freshness. Is there is that a change from what you guys saw at this time last year trying to prepare to make your defense what you thought it could be? Is that like a, a big change from what you saw in the past to this year? I think any time you have experience under your belt, you're just more confident because it's not for the first time. And then when you, when you change – uh, what you're doing, there's a little bit of freshness, like you're mentioning. But then also just the way that uh, the guys are attacking, the way Jim calls the defenses. So I think when you mix all three of those things up, that's why you're seeing a little bit of that juice. Third row middle, Zach Carpenter, rival. Uh, yeah, Ryan, huge recruiting weekend. Um, even though it may not pay off immediately, how are you guys feeling about the progress you made with a lot of those guys? Yeah. Obviously can't talk specifics, but 
I think uh, it was a great recruiting weekend. Um, some really good prospects and families here. And, and I think when you look at the way that um, recruiting is across college football, the idea is that, you know, when guys want to commit, they're done. You know, they're, they're going to commit to your school. They've made their decisions. They, you know, they've made their decisions strong. They're not going to go visit any other school. And then they're all in and they help you recruit the class. Um, and I think that's where guys are, guys are trying to figure that out. You know, am I ready to finally make the decision? I mean, there's some guys that are really close. And I think, like you said, we're going to see some the next couple of months, a bunch of really good stuff come our way. Uh, but I just want to make sure that they're done. Uh, I don't want them going to visit other schools. It's just it's not very good policy. So if they need to go check out some other schools, they'll go ahead and do that. Um, but once, it, once their mind's made up, they want to be a Buckeye, then I tell them their, cha- their life changes forever, and that's it. Um, so uh, really good work done this week. I thought our staff did a great job. I thought the atmosphere was awesome. The students were great. And so uh, put ourselves moving forward in a good spot. Once a player is committed to you guys, I'm curious, how closely do you guys monitor their strength and conditioning program to make sure they're sort of doing the right things at that level? Well, we really can't do anything until they sign, and then we can start to get involved with that and start to send out some of those types of things. Um, but uh, but up until then, um, you know, they know what we do. But typically we just tell them to, to uh, you know, follow their high school plan. And, um, you know, they get a chance to see us to some of our drills and kind of learn how we do things here. Uh, but we're not allowed to get really involved in that until after they sign. Uh, second row middle, Nathan Bear, Cleveland.com. <coughs> uh, to go back to uh, Steele and, and Chip as well, uh, Jim was in here talking last week about how much he likes guys who have that running back background right. and what they can bring to linebackers. So the experience, are those kind of one-off um, examples, do you think, or the, ex- the experience you're having with Steele and Chip, does it make you kind of reassess how you're recruiting linebackers, what athletes you're looking for there in the future? I mean, I think anytime you have somebody, like like Jim said, I didn't hear him say that, but I agree with him, is that you know when you have the ability to take a, somebody who's a running back and move them to linebacker, um, I think over the years some of the great ones had done that, you know, just because athletically in high school, you know, you want the guy who's the best athlete on the field carrying the ball, and then all of a sudden they, they move to linebacker. But everyone's uh, different, so we're not going to go try to find a bunch of running backs to play linebacker. It's just when, when that those type of things work, but Chip played linebacker in high school. Uh, Steele played, you know. So, um, you know, when they came, you know, he went to Arizona State, and then uh, we recruited him as a linebacker. We thought that was his best position for him and played really good at linebacker, by the way, at Hoban. But, um, but then decided this is what he thought his, his highest ceiling was. And it was the same thing with Steele coming out. Um, we had the conversation that, you know, we're going to start a, li- a running back, but we could quickly go to linebacker if that's what we think makes sense. So uh, it wasn't like it was a huge shift. They had done that anyways. Um, but the more athletic you can be at that position, the better. The better ball skills, spatial awareness, di- diagnosing plays. I think that all adds up. Did Tommy's performance in the Rose Bowl, Tommy Eichenberg, show you guys something new from him? And was there anything from that performance that is now carried into the spring for him? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's given him some momentum for sure. I think he's seeing things. I think he enjoys being in, in Jim's uh, meetings and in, in, in the uh, uh, defense. I think uh, for, for Tommy, um, it's just, you know, as you start to add up these reps over and over, you think about two years ago with Tuff and Pete and Barron and Justin Hilliard, those guys had played a lot of football, and then they played veteran that season. We're hoping to see that next step progression with, with the, the linebackers and really a lot of guys on this team because at this point last year they had not played. None of those guys had any reps. So uh, the more you play, the slower the game is. Uh, front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Well, Ryan, from, certainly compared to last year, the, the two deep, I think, is much more settled. Um, right. You talked about separation in these next two weeks. What areas, what players, what positions are you really looking at uh, to, to make that jump, and where is your focus going to be? I can't sit here and tell you there's one position because as you go through, you look at the corners, you look at the safeties, the linebackers, the D-line. Um, like you said, we're kind of too deep at most positions, and so that's great. But you try to figure out, and, and now is a little bit too early, but to say, you know, are, are we ready to put those guys in a game and just rotate them? Um, or is it, you know, this is the starter, and then he'll, he'll kind of go in there and get some reps um, when appropriate. Um, we do need to get more, more depth in the offensive line, that's for sure. Um, I feel pretty good about, you know, five, six guys, but we need to get to seven, eight, nine, which was a strength for us the last couple of years. Um, you know, receiver, uh, kind of same thing. You know, who's going to be the top six or seven guys that we can count on in a game? Um, but, but, but across the board, I think the depth has been strong. But, um, you know, it's one thing to just be in the game. It's another thing, to be, another thing to be the guy that you're counting on. And I think that's when you go into a new team, it's just a different feel. Um, you know, running back, 
same thing. You know, I know, you know, we, what we can get out of Trey and with Maya and now Evan Pryor is starting to make a push to see if, you know, he can get some reps in the game. So, um, you know, everyone, every time we say it every year when we come in for that first meeting after the last game, so the Rose Bowl's done, we come in, those seniors uh, are now gone. Some new guys have moved up front and then everybody's moved down a couple um, seats. And th these seats right here are different than the ones when they were back there than they were back there, you know, and, and I think learning what those roles are going to be as someone you can count on with leadership is, is all important. Um, just a couple follow ups. Is he knocked number six, first of all, in terms of the offensive lineman? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's right there. He's doing a good job. Uh, he's been through a lot this year and, and proud of the way he's played the last few practices. So if he can keep pushing, then he's a guy that's going to play. And uh, with the receivers, you know, Cam Babb wasn't there Saturday. We obviously didn't see him. How's his progression been? Has he, has he been healthy? He's been healthy. Um, you know, he had a little, you know, bump in a road that, um, you know, we, we were a little worried about, but uh, it didn't come back as, as a big deal. So that was great. Um, I thought up until that practice, he had been really practicing at a high level, um, really had a chance to have an impact on this offense, and I think he will. So we'll get him back in a couple weeks and get back to work. Uh, time for just a couple more. Uh, front row right, Jim May, let him in row. Yeah, Ryan, as you sit back there and watch, like, CJ run the offense, like Saturday, that's what I like about Student Appreciation Day. I could stand right there almost close to you and just see the chaos in front of him and the, the line's running a stunt and the safety's coming down and all this kind of stuff is going on, and yet he's making sense of all that while yeah. also making sense of the coverage. Where does that, where does that come from? I mean, I, you dealt with that as a, as a player yourself, yeah. as a quarterback. I mean, do, you, do, do some guys come along with that better than others? And is that really the fine line that separates the good from the great? Yes, absolutely. And I think maybe being down there, you get to recognize and appreciate that. You know, it's like standing on 315 North sometimes, you know, with those, <laughs> those cars buzzing by you. Uh, when you do seven on seven, are you throwing routes on air? That's why, I like, when we do our pro day out here, and the quarterback's just throwing a one guy, like, okay, it's fine, but that's that's not football. Seven on seven is not football. What you saw up close and personal is football. And I think when people say, you know, does he have it? They usually talk about the quarterback position. That's part of it. Just understanding what's going on, being able to stand in there with poise and process all that's going on. When you got twenty one other guys on the field at that time, and um, and that's that's part of playing the position. And like you said, it's it's hard to teach. Yeah. And uh, one of the things, uh, and speaking of the other side of the ball, uh, do you, do you see as you watch the video of y'all's practice when y'all go eleven on eleven and good on good, or whatever you, you want to call it, do you see an integrated unit on the other side? Meaning, uh, and and that's not slamming last year's stuff, but is it? Do you see kind of like what you were hoping to see uh, with a system, so to speak, uh, from Jim and, and stuff bringing that in? One of the things that I see is just first off in the meetings, um, you know, Jim's up in front of the whole group, and there's a lot of interaction within the group, um, and the teaching's been really good, and it's all tied in, all three levels. Um, and that's what we're seeing on the field as well. Thanks, man. Uh, and final question, third row right, Doug May, Marine, Cleveland.com. When, when you were a quarterback, were you good at that, seeing the field, digesting everything, visualizing eyes, brain. How, how big a part of that was your game? Uh, that was my only game <laughs> because I was not athletic. <laughs> I was not very fast. So that only, that's, that's what gave me a chance. So when you have a quarterback who you feel like is getting that and is seeing it and connecting eyes to brain, do you feel like you understand that on a very deep level? What's, what's that like for you as you watch CJ do this? Yeah, um, yeah, I think you're hitting on something there. I think that when you're in meetings and we talk about things and you start to see it happening fast and quick at the same uh, processing level that as a coach you see it, that's when you have something really special. And I think that's what separates the great ones in the NFL. When you look at you know, the Bradys and the Rodgers and the Breezes and all the guys, you know, Russell Wilson, who they're like coaches. They see it like coaches because they watch so much film and they study it so much. There's not much difference there. And, um, and, and that's when you know you have somebody really good who can process information at a high level, but then also have the athleticism to be able to per perform and make the throws and do what they need to do. Unlike you. <laughs> I'm like, that's why I'm here and not playing. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, when we were talking with Luke Whippler the other day, he seems like a high IQ football guy. We know he's a tape cruncher. CJ high IQ quarterback. Agreed. When you have a center and a quarterback like that, where do you what do you see with the two of them understanding the game and then understanding the game together? Agreed. Uh, I think 
when, when both of those guys are as conscientious and watch as much film as they do and understand it like that, um, that really helps. Um, going into last year, you know, we didn't have that two new guys when the Dwayne and Mike Jordan came in, you know, new. So any, anytime you go through that new, the new every you're learning everything for the first time, you know, you come up to the sideline, did you see this? Yeah. Like you don't even have a reference point to go back to. These guys at least now have a reference point and they put the work in, they're conscientious. It matters a lot to them. I mean, a lot. And they're very intelligent and, and skilled. And last thing, a different side of the ball. Um, CJ Hicks, you know, again, his name came up. A guy like Trayvon Henderson last year as a true freshman, obviously the opportunity was there. He also had the skills to take advantage of it. In your time in college football, how has your view of playing true freshman evolved? Obviously, opportunity matters, but what does it take for a guy to even have a shot to really have an impact as a true freshman? I think it's hard nowadays to start playing as a true freshman if you don't come at mid-year. I, I wouldn't have said that in the, in the past, but it does make a difference now. Now, JT did it. Donovan played last year. The, you know, Some guys have done it. But I think the mid-year does help. Not that I'm trying to promote that, but that's just the truth. When you have a whole spring under your belt and the whole offseason, uh, that matters. Uh, but I do think that you need – everyone's on a different journey. And I think the focus always has to be on development. Now, where along the line is your development? There are three-year guys. There are four-year guys. There are five-year guys. Now there are six-year guys. And, you know, each guy has to understand their development could be different than the guy next to him. Their journey could be different than the guy who's sitting in the locker next to him. But the end goal is the same, is to be a great player at Ohio State, beat the team up north, win the Big Ten championship, and win a national championship. And then along after that, hopefully have an opportunity to go play in the NFL. And they just – everyone needs to understand their journey could be different. Now, that being said, uh, we want to get guys on the field as soon as we can because uh, especially for those guys who are maybe gone in three and four years, you know, we don't want to wait around. They don't want to wait around. And, you know, Gene Smith and I talked about this a year ago at this point. We knew we had some young guys that we had to get on the field that we're going to live with growing pains. But when you do that, you're able to, you know, the next year and the year after, you know, get the benefits of the experience in that moment. So.